really excited to kind of share this new thing that I made with you today. It's uh, something that just kind of popped into my head suddenly in the middle of my next project, and I just had to do it right away. Uh, if you're like me and you make modular uh, terrain pieces out of XPS foam or like rigid insulation foam, you'll probably know quite well that it's very, very lightweight, and uh, oftentimes you want to weight it down. Um, in my previous video, I talked about weighting down some of the taller pillars uh, to help them from tipping over so easily and making them easier to stand up. However, the tiles themselves actually kind of need a lot of weight in them too if you want them to kind of stay where you intend to put them. You run into a lot of issues with this, especially on slick surfaces. I, I knew that a slick surface, like a wood table or something like that, just is not ideal for this foam because it's it's very slick and because it's so lightweight, if you're setting it up or like you're moving just like a miniature on top of it, you'll see that the tile actually will move very easily. So after doing some research, I've seen a lot of things that people have done. I've tried weighting the tiles myself just with smaller screws and it just there's never enough weight to be added. And going out of my way to add like maybe metal plates to it that have more weight to them or lead weights, something just heavier, really isn't... I don't know, it's kind of a pain, to be honest with you. Um, and to have to do that each time that you make a tile set would be just a headache over and over and over again. I found that some people just like to maybe use hot glue on the side and like make it really thin so it grips. That kind of doesn't really work, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, and after doing a lot of research, I thought that the felt, putting uh, the foam pieces on felt because they kind of grab it a little bit, uh, was kind of the solution. So I went that route and it kind of works. And I'll demonstrate that for you here in a minute, but I was finding out in a lot of our gaming sessions that I didn't like it. I don't know, just it, it's just, it's, there's just a lot of flaws with it. Uh, so like I said, I was working on my next uh, project that I'm gonna be putting out here in the next couple weeks or so, hopefully, and I just had an idea and I came up with what I call the mag board. Uh, it's very simple to make and the great thing about it is it takes a little while to make. I actually made it in just a couple hours. So it was only about two to three hours of my time. And with every tile set that I make in the future, it takes no time at all to make those new tiles work with the Magboard system. So let's get right into it and I'll show you exactly how I made it. So here is a tile from the pro my last project. Uh, very lightweight XPS foam, as you can see, it moves easily you blow on it it moves very easily across slick surfaces and when you're setting these up and they're kind of touching each other they like to migrate and shift to where you not get them aligned you don't get them aligned as well as you intended and here it is on some felt uh honestly it it kind of is the same way just gives it a little bit more resistance so you can see it still spins a little bit but anything's going to do that when you hit your fingers on it with this foam uh, when you blow on it, it doesn't slide as much, but it still slides. And you run into the same issue when stacking these next to each other. They bump into each other and they move each other around and it's not ideal. And here is the mag board. As you can see, when I slide the tile on here, it actually snaps right into place. And it passes with flying colors, the blow test. And I blow on it pretty hard. So the great thing about this is that it just stays in place. I can jiggle the board around and it's always gonna stay there. Players can accidentally bump the table and or the board and the tiles will stay where they need to. So I started with a piece of foam core. This one is the black on black. The foam in this one compared to the black on white or the white with the white foam in between, uh, it's a little bit different than that white foam. It's a little bit more coarse, and I feel like it is a bit more a bit more rigid. So, I went with that one because I felt like it would be, uh, I guess, more resilient and stand up to being uh, kind of beat up and moved around a lot. So the first step is to measure out the spacing of the size of tiles that you use. I make most everything in a that basically something that's divisible by three. So anywhere from a three by three to like a six by three to a six by six, etc. Mostly, actually, right now, almost all my tiles are three by three. So take a piece of measuring tape or ruler or whatever and go across and mark every three inches across 
all four sides of your board so you can know where to start connecting the lines to draw your grid. The size this board came in was not divisible by three on one side. It was a 30 by 20 inch, so I had to cut it down to 18 inch by 30 inch. Then you'll want to take a straight edge and connect all of those markings uh, to create your full grid on the back side of the board. This is going to help us to determine where each square is going to lie on the board and then in the next step help us determine where we need to put our magnets. Then in each of the grid squares you're going to, want to take a smaller straight edge and draw an X in each one of them like so. This is going to find the center of each of these squares and this was where we're going to be placing each magnet. Then take your magnets, uh, I stacked mine up like this, and then all I did was at the center of each of these cross points that I made, I just kind of pressed them into place uh, to create a stencil for where I needed to cut. Uh, this will really make your fingers pretty sore, so take breaks if you need to, I did. Uh, it's pretty. It's a pretty stiff material, so uh, it got tiresome after some time, but then I just take an X-Acto knife and I cut around the little circle that I, or the little imprint that I made and pop that out. Um, this material of foam, like I said, is a bit more coarse uh, and a little bit more like airy, I guess, than other, uh, the, the white foam core. So taking it out, I used a pair of tweezers and it kind of comes out in small pieces as opposed to nice good chunks. So. It'll take some time with this kind. If you use the other kind, it'll work as well. You'll just have, your board won't be quite as stiff as this particular foam is. Then you just do that however many times or however many squares you have. And uh, so put on something nice to listen to or watch and enjoy it <laughs> and help the time go by. Once you get all the foam out, you want to make sure that it is going to work and you are using the right method uh, to fit your magnet inside. So. Definitely have the magnet nearby, um, at least just on the first hole to make sure that you've got a good idea of how big you're supposed to cut the hole. I ended up having to cut just outside the imprint as opposed to right on the imprint that I made of the magnet, and uh, that's what worked for me. So just a little bit of trial and error and you'll be able to get this done in no time. As far as securing these to the holes, um, well I guess first you want to make sure that you don't rip through the paper on the other side because for one it'll look nicer but also you want to get all, of, all the foam moved down to the paper on the opposite side so you have the thinnest bit of material between the magnet and your tile so i ended up using uh super glue uh, to attach them it takes a tiny dot and it doesn't bleed through on the other side at least with this the thick paper on this particular kind of foam core and uh, it worked really well and the magnets are very secure now but you can use hot glue or tacky glue or whatever but this glue is so thin that again you want to have as little material between the magnet and the other side of the board so your tile pieces can have the strongest uh, magnetism to the magnet after your mag board's all done uh, all you need to do is get your tile pieces ready to work with the mag board and this is very simple all you're going to need to do is go buy some screws that have a flat head and make sure that they are the depth that they need to be without poking through the other side of your tile. For me, this was a half inch uh, flat head screw. These are size number eight. Uh, the, head of, the head is almost the exact same size as the magnet. Um, but honestly, you just find the center of each one of these tiles and you screw it in. It's really that simple. Just make sure that you get a screw that's magnetic, like zinc or steel or whatever, and make sure that it has a flat head so it can sit flush and flat with the tile. Uh, stainless steel is not magnetic, so don't buy those. Also, they're way more expensive. These are really cheap, and this is a really easy way to make all of your future tiles that you make work with the mag board. The last step that I did, and this is totally optional, was I wanted to be able to make just see easily where I could find a magnet on the other side of the board so I found the center put in four squares got each of the corners and then kind of traced them on there I then removed the squares and then made sure that my kind of lines were going to be nice and straight with a ruler 
And then I took a just a white paint pen and just highlighted those corners right at the center of the board. So this way I know exactly where I need to put the, the first uh, tile when building a new setup for a new encounter. Again, this is totally optional. I You can do whatever you want. I almost actually did this for every single grid square, uh, but decided just the big one in the center would be plenty uh, to get me started. And as you can see, now I know exactly where each magnet's going to be when I place the tile on here. And uh, yeah, also kind of looks nice. It almost looks like a picture, like you're taking a picture and you're catching something in frame. So let's wrap this video up with a comparison between the felt and the mag board. Now felt's really cheap. It's super simple. All you have to do is get it, cut it to size however you want or not, and just roll it out on your table and you're good to go. When you put the tiles down, and if you've done this before, you know you have to be very careful when you put them down. You don't want them to touch each other too much or too, I guess, roughly, uh, because as they touch each other, they shift and move and they can mess with your vision for the encounter terrain that you're building. As you can see, uh, as you move the felt, it actually stays together pretty well if players accidentally bump it or whatever. Uh, but when you just barely touch it, like just lightly, it moves. And if you want to start moving tiles around, it's just, it, it affects, it's like a domino effect. One hits the other and it kind of messes everything up, um, which is really frustrating. So, but if we compare it to the mag board, for one, it's just one simple piece and you just lay it out there and it's good to go. It's rigid and it's easy to transport, just as easy to transport felt. But uh, you can place your pieces on here and even if you bump the mag board or your players accidentally bump it, the tiles aren't going anywhere. Uh, you put things on, you don't have to be as delicate. You just kind of put them in there and they snap into place. It's really great. And when you want to kind of move the board around, you can shake it, they all stay there. I mean, like really shake it. Everything's good. You lightly tap it like we did before. Everything stays, doesn't move, doesn't budge. Those, are, those light taps are to like be examples of like moving just character pieces across the board. Um, as you go to change pieces around, it's no big deal. The pieces stay there. They might move slightly, but it's not this big domino effect that screws up the entire piece that you're trying to build or change. So super convenient. I love this. I'm so excited to use it in my session this week. It's going to be great. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I think this is going to be a real big game changer out there. I hope a lot of people will make it and use it in their own sessions with their own tile sets. Curious to see what people do with it. I already have ideas for like a version 2.0 uh, for the mag board and uh, the mag tiles. Uh, I really want to be able to have them magnetic all the way through the tile for stacking. I did some experiments on it, but uh, wasn't happy with like the difficulty of doing it. So uh, jury's still out on that. I want to be able to convert some of my older tiles as well. Uh, so I'm trying to find a really easy way to do that. The other thing that I'm looking forward to doing on this in the Magboard 2.0 is I have a lot of those corner pieces that kind of like corner steps and things like that that you that don't find the exact center very well. Um, I'm trying to find an easy way to do that because especially with the steps for my ruins, uh, they don't really make a screw that's less than a quarter inch thick that will grab the magnet strong enough. Or they might. If you know of any, leave a comment down below because I'd love to make those work as well. Um, yeah, still a few things to work out, but I think overall this is going to be, like I said, a big game changer uh, for tabletop terrain. It's so easy to make, it's inexpensive. If you wanna find any of the materials for it, you can check it out in the description below, uh, some of the things that I used. And yeah, good luck, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for all the new subscribers, especially those who are commenting and liking. Please do so, like, comment, and subscribe for future videos. My next uh, project is a little bit bigger one. It's another large tile set, and I'm excited to make it because I'm going to have a lot of encounters using that particular one combined with my Ruin tile set. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.